Welcome to the City of Classen's Council meeting for Tuesday, June 20th. This meeting is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Prayer is part of our heritage in the United States beginning in 1775 when Congress asked the colonies to pray for wisdom in forming a nation. In 1863, President Lincoln re requested a day of prayer reporting his own wisdom and that of all about him seemed insufficient for the day. Please bow your heads as we pray together. Dear Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. Thank you for your many and abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health we need to fulfill our callings. Thank you for the ability to, to be involved in useful work and for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. Thank you for loving us, even from your boundless and gracious nature. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Here. Councilmember Ayers? Here. Councilmember Horton? Here. Councilmember Ulbrich? Here. Councilmember Woolley? Here. We'd like to amend the agenda this evening to include an item after the consent agenda for the cost participation agreement for construction on Elmwood Avenue. Madam Mayor, I move that uh, the agenda be amended this evening to add 5B, consideration of approving the cost participation agreement. Support. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Councilmember Horton? Yes. Councilmember Oberg? Yes. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. Mayor Loops? Yes. The first item is the consent agenda. On the consent agenda are approving the minutes from our last council meeting. Approving the minutes from the council workshop held Tuesday, June 13th, and the minutes of a special, another <clears throat> council workshop on June 13th. The appointment of George Jacobson to the Planning Commission. Appointment of Daniel Collins to the Traffic and Safety Board. Appointment of Maureen Moore to the Traffic and Safety Board. Appointment of Samuel Moore to the Traffic and Safety Board. And reappointment of Eva Burns to the Blair Memorial Library Board. Madam Mayor, move the consent agenda be approved as listed. Support. Comments or questions? Uh, question. I know that we had at least two other people who said they were applying for the Traffic and Safety Board. Had they not turned in an application or were they not available for that? There is no application. Okay. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Councilmember Albert? Yes. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. Mayor Lubes? Yes. Councilmember Horton? Yes. The next item is the agreement between the City of Troy and Clawson for the construction project. The total project is $800,000. The uh, Troy has agreed to contribute $500,000 for concrete pavement replacement on the Troy side. Clawson has agreed to contribute 300000 for concrete pavement replacement on the Clawson side, the south side of Elmwood Am Avenue from Livernoy to Rochester Road. <clears throat> so we need a motion to move forward with the agreement. Madam Mayor, I move the cost participation agreement by and between the City of Troy and the City of Clawson for the removal and replacement of portions of concrete pavement on Elmwood Avenue in the amount of $300,000, being 100% of Clawson's contribution be approved. Support. <clears throat> Mr. Pollock, is any of this money coming from any place else besides the City of Troy or City of Clawson no. for our portion of $300,000? No. The, uh, it will all be from... Um, I'll present council with either a loan uh, or an internal loan, which we could have the possibility to do to save some money um, utilizing some of the infrastructure money we've put aside. So uh, I'll come back to you with what 
what option you prefer, but it will all be coming from Clawson. Okay. So that's an opportune time for us as Troy is committed to repairing that piece of Elmwood this year, and it just makes sense for us to repair our side at the same time. I have a question for Mr. Pollock. Um, as it always seems, when we are redoing roads, when they pull up cement, we find other things under that need to be replaced. That's all been... Yeah, the, there's consideration for uh, work other than the cement work, or it, some of it might be a little more extreme. But yeah, that is been taken into consideration. Okay. Yeah, it must be because the first estimate we saw was 250,000. So I'm guessing the 50,000 is for any extra or unforeseen circumstances. <clears throat> Anything else? Roll call, please. Councilmember Rowley? Yes. Mayor Loops? Yes. Councilmember Horton? Yes. Councilmember Alberg? Yes. The, the next item is one of the delightful things we on council are elected to do, and that's to recognize service awards to our city employees. One moment. <laughs> We initially recognize employees at our staff. It says on. We initially recognize city employees at our staff volunteer and employee picnic. I'm going to read all the names and the number of years of people who are here, and I would ask you to come up when your name is read. So we have Stacy Hodges from our treasurer department, who is our treasurer for 25 years. 20 years for Sandra Roth from the library and, and Bob Schreiber from our police department. 15 years, Kathy Morrison from our senior citizen department and Beth Prince, a crossing guard, for 15 years. 10 years, Daryl Adams from our police department, Ed Boyd, our fire department, Paul Darr from our police department, and Melody Nichols from our museum. So would you, would you step up here? So, congratulations. You have your, we did, we did present you with an award, but 25 years, day in, day out, is a marvelous opportunity. It's marvelous for us to have you here with your experience and your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for... 15 years in grateful recognition of your service in all kinds of weather to treat each child with respect and build a friendship up with the kids who, who cross at your area. It, to see a familiar face day in and day out, 15 years. We hope you're here for another 15 years. Thank you. Yeah, and, and another award. So congratulations. And for those who aren't here today, we have your certificates and your, your other awards for you to pick up here at City Hall. Thank you. So, Dave, it looks like this microphone might need a little bit of repair or replacement. Or batteries. Yes. <laughs> the next item is consideration of approving the final tax transfer list of delinquent water bills to the 2017 summer taxes. Madam Mayor, move the final tax transfer list of delinquent water bills be placed on the July 2017 summer tax roll. Support. And Mr. Pollock, I noticed in the uh, list of delinquent water bills, we have a new process for reporting with parcel 
and uh, code numbers. Is that part of our new program? Yeah, it's the uh, hope is to make it easy for Stacy to upload to BSNA's tax software rather than having to manually input all of them. So it is part of what we uh, hope to gain when we switch to BSNA. So it'll save her some time. Okay, thank you. Any questions on the water bills? It's up from last year. <clears throat> But other than that, no comment. Roll call, please. Mayor Lubes? Yes. Councilmember Horton? Yes. Councilmember Elbrick? Yes. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. The next item is approving the amendments to the 1617 fiscal year budget, and I will defer to Mr. Pollock for more explanation. It does look like about $65,800. Is what you're looking for? Yeah, our general fund amendments, um, most of the departments had either net zero adjustments from one line item to another. We did have some that slightly went over budget. Um, I, the majority of our general fund increases, we had the uh, streetlight program that we had originally not budgeted for, uh, for capital that was $52,150. And then our health insurance costs did go up this year. We had two really great years, and um, since we're partially self-insured, those amounts can fluctuate. And this year we had to bump up our uh, health care costs slightly. So those are the biggest amendments. The other ones are you know, what I would consider minor uh, budget amendments. And then in our other funds, um, we had some net decreases and some increases, but... Um, for the most part, again, I think uh, I think our budget numbers stay pretty true from year to year. Um, the ones that are unexpected seem to be the ones we're always having to amend. Um, or if we have an unexpected repair, major and local streets, you know, generally is one where uh, we estimate the amount of work we're going to do and we hope to get close and then something pops up and similar to what's going on on Elmwood. Uh, those are things when we want to take advantage of them, we do. And then in water and sewer, we had some increases and decreases, but uh, the first time in quite a while, we actually had an increase in in water sales, technically, and um, which results in sewer treatment. But um, for the most part, the budget amendments were, I guess, what I would term minor. The tax administration fee for $14,000, what does that relate to? That's, uh, we collect 1% on our property taxes um, uh, for collecting on behalf of the schools and the county. And each year we estimate, we expected it to drop a little bit because of the loss in personal property uh, that's being gradually removed, but we didn't have a loss uh, quite as much as we expected, so we actually bumped that up from the budgeted amount. But that's the 1% we collect uh, to distribute, collect and distribute money on behalf of the schools in the county. And the cable franchise fees for 5000 We actually still have a lot of cable subscribers, so we bumped that one up a little bit as well. had an increase from last year so okay thank you the street light program is something that we're going to recoup over a couple of years right yeah the savings the estimate estimate they did bump the led costs up a little bit now that they have a pretty good idea of the, uh, what the cost will be but they estimated 28 to 30 months for the two-year um, replacement of uh, most of the high cost street lights now in Clawson have been replaced um, and just to throw out there, if we do still get reports of people saying they're extremely bright, they've either shielded or changed the aim on several of them, uh, which I know makes people happy because we do, we do. St there's still one outstanding, I think, on Florence um, that Reggie Brown, our regional rep, uh, contacted Doug and I on today and said that they should take care of that this week. But occasionally, if, if they're really bright and they're shining in your yard or in your windows, uh, let me know. Uh, either by email or phone, and then they do have a crew that goes out and fixes 
either shortens the arm or puts a shield on them or just changes the aim because the LED lights are significantly brighter and much more cost efficient. Anything else? Roll call, please. Councilmember Horton? Yes. Councilmember Elbrick? Yes. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. Mayor Lubes? Yes. The <clears throat> next item looks at approving PSLZ, our certified public accountants, for the upcoming year to audit our fiscal year ending June 30th, 2017. Madam Mayor, I move the engagement letter from PSLZ LLP for the auditing of the City of Clawson for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2017, be accepted and to authorize the City Manager to sign the letter. Up. Support. But Dave Williamson, who is our auditor, has been here for a number of years and uh, absolutely does an excellent job and is a wealth of knowledge regarding all the accounts the city has and up to date on the current tax law. So he certainly is a benefit to the city. I believe he's made several suggestions on some ways that we can save some money. Mm -hmm. So I yes. will mention now that you mentioned that Dave is retiring <gasps> unexpectedly. No. But he we are uh Raina Emmons who was his partner and worked in Clawson before his taking over as the audit partner. And uh, we believe Dave's going to still do field work, mm -hmm. um, working uh, for Post My Flutes and Zeal and for Raina. So, um, but he did. We 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 did get an email uh, that concerned us a little bit because it mentioned his health. But we've been reassured he's he's okay. But this was an opportunity for him to step away. So, as of June thirtieth, uh, Dave will be retired. But. Um, he will likely still be doing a lot of the audit field work as long as he's willing to do that. So, so Raina will now be our partner. When does Dave retire? Uh, June thirtieth. So. Well, that was unexpected, huh? Yeah, it was. Well, we certainly need to send him a, a letter from council and city staff thanking him yeah. for his many years of service. How many years was, it, was did he audit Clawson? Well, he was there. I've been here 17, and I think I think he came on in 98, mm -hmm. so close to 20 years. Okay. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilmember Elbrick? Yes. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. Mayor Lubes? Yes. Councilmember Horton? Yes. The next item looks at the first reading of an ordinance to amend the land development regulations to incorporate certain new definitions, update the general statement of the ordinance purposes, revise the procedures for issuing certificates of occupancy, revise the procedures for site plan review, update the schedule of regulations for all districts, revise the schedule of obscuring wall requirements, create new supplemental regulations to revise the provisions of the current city center zoning district. And I will defer to our planner. Well, we had an opportunity to speak about these at length uh, the other night, uh, so I won't, won't necessarily belabor them. Uh, what's different from the last time uh, they appeared before you uh, and, and per council's uh, direction of the workshop, we took out the uh, uh, CMD district uh, uh, amendments and the core residential amendments. Uh, I think you're going to ask count or planning commission to look at those further uh, and then bring them back at a later date. Uh, so this will implement all the amendments associated with uh, uh, the kind of administrative procedures that we had looked at, site plan review. Uh, temporary CO stuff that we've talked about before and that it will also put in place the new form-based zoning for the city center itself uh, together with all the supplemental regulations that go along with that which will also serve those other districts uh, when they're ultimately created but uh, for the time being it will 
put in place only uh, the city center district amendments. I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Do you have any timeline and when do you think the the rest of it will be uh, through the Planning Commission and perhaps done or at least presented to Council? Uh, I would think in the next month or so. I, I think it would be prudent to have Planning Commission hold another public hearing on those because uh, uh, I think uh, it's now a different ordinance, right? I mean, you're passing this as ordinance number, whatever the number is that's going to be assigned to it. Uh, and so I think the, those other amendments should have a new ordinance number and, and come back to you. And, and I suspect Planning Commission might have a couple other things that they want to send up to you as well along with it. But uh, I would think uh, that that could happen. Uh, public hearing could conceivably happen in July even, and uh, then it could be back to you in August. Anything else? Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor, I move the proposed ordinance to amend Chapter 34, Land Development Regulations, Article 10, Zoning, by amending Divisions 1, 2, 4, 6, 19, and 23, to incorporate certain new definitions to update the general statement of the ordinance's purpose, to revise the procedures for issuing certificates of occupancy, to revise the procedures for site plan review, to update the schedule of regulations for all districts in light of these amendments, to revise the schedule of obscuring wall requirements in light of these amendments, to create certain new supplemental regulations, to substantially revise the provisions of the current city center zoning district be entered into first reading. Support. Anything else? <clears throat> Roll call, please. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. Mayor Loops? Yes. Councilmember Horton? Yes. Councilmember Albrecht? Yes. <clears throat> the next item looks at a res resolution authorizing the city clerk to sign the software license agreement by and between Hart InterCivic and the city of Clawson and to authorize the purchase of one additional voting tabulator. The state of Michigan determined that the election systems in the state should be replaced due to breakdowns in the availability of more modern technology. The state conducted years-long testing, bid packets, and review of proposed equipment. Madam Mayor, I move the resolution to authorize the city clerk to sign the software license agreement and purchase one additional voting tabulator at a cost of $5,000 to subsidize the new election equipment purchased for the city by the state of Michigan be approved. Support. <clears throat> Questions? Roll call, please. Mayor Lubes? Yes. Councilmember Horton? Yes. Councilmember Albrecht? Yes. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. <clears throat> The next item is a request by the DDA to close South Main Street on Saturday, July 8th for the cinema in the street. The movie uh, this year will be Night at the Museum. The street closer, closure would begin at 4.30 to midnight. The downtown activities begin at 6 with... Um, uh, crafts and more activities for kids prior to the movie beginning at dusk. Madam Mayor, move the DDA's uh, request to close South Main between 14 and Madison on Saturday, July 8th from 4.30 to 12 midnight for the 10th annual outdoor movie night be approved as presented. Support. Any comments? <clears throat> Roll call, please. Councilmember Horton? Yes. Councilmember Elbrook? Yes. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. Mayor Loops? Yes. The next item uh, is a resolution proclaiming July as Parks and Recreation Month in the city of Clawson. Parks and Recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout the country, including the city of Clawson. The U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month. Uh, and we do recognize the benefits derived from our, our parks and recreation resources. Madam Mayor, I move that the resolution proclaiming July 2017 as Parks and Recreation Month in the City of Clawson be approved. 
Support. Support. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Councilmember Albrick? Yes. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. Mayor Lubes? Yes. Councilmember Horton? Yes. The next item looks at the bills to be paid in the next two weeks. Madam Mayor, pay the bills. Support. <clears throat> Any questions on the bills? Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Woolley? Yes. Mayor Lubes? Yes. Councilmember Horton? Yes. Councilmember Albrecht? Yes. Mm. There is no city attorney's report tonight, so we'll move to city manager's report. Yes, Madam Mayor and Council, I put together um, another PowerPoint. It's not all that different than the previous ones I've done, but I think we're at a point where um, we need to make a decision on how we're going to fund uh, the remaining 60% of the city that still needs to be done in the way of sidewalks. Um, I do have a map uh, that Mike can bring up here in a minute uh, that our engineering firm put together that would identify uh, five years worth of sidewalk program which would complete the city uh, in those zones. Um, um, it would take five years to complete and uh, the bonding proposal um, at the request of council we did ask our our um, bond attorney and our bond advisors to look at a way uh, to try to do this without any increase in taxes. And uh, they have calculated, uh, actually did get good news late yesterday that the debt millage has actually dropped a little bit more than they expected for the year that's coming up. So it'll go from 7.8 to 7.65. And uh, Paul Stouter did confirm that the rate would continue to remain the same or drop slightly uh, even if these bonds are sold, uh, if voters approve it in November. So um, that was good to hear because uh, I estimated, I think they had estimated we'd be around 7.7 seven and change, 7.71, seven, seven, and we're actually at 7.65, so uh, the rate dropped more than expected. So that was great news. But I'll just run through again a little bit of the history of, of um, the sidewalk program. The fee, as a, as a refresher, the fee started in 2006 when council approved uh, a six-year program. Uh, the fee levied, it ran through 2013 and then approved for another six years. The fee was a $25 fee per residential household. Um, we got through about 40% of the city in the 10 years of the program and realized that had we, if we had to continue to get through the other 60% at the rate of collection of $25, it would take at least another 17 years to get through. And I think the interest was we needed to get it done quicker. Um, so therefore, we're no longer going to collect the $25 annual sidewalk fee starting this summer. Um, I did show the map of the engineering's estimate of five years. Uh, it's quite a bit larger than what we had been doing, but they figured feasibility for disruption in neighborhood and um, mobility of the cement contractors, that five-year schedule would be uh, probably the best case scenario to get through it the quickest. Um, after s uh, some conversation with our bond advisor and bond attorney, they recommended that the city uh, ask the voters to approve a sidewalk bond, technically an unlimited tax general obligation bond, uh, to complete the program. Um, if council approves the uh, option, the referendum would go on the November ballot and the bond proceeds would all be used to complete the sidewalk program. Um, and as I mentioned, you had, the council's interest was to try and keep uh, the cost down as uh, debt and millage comes off the books. Uh, adding on new millage is certainly less impactful. And, and in this case, the first couple of years, 0 .3, uh, 0 .3 and 0 .31, I believe, mills, uh, would basically be swallowed up by debt that's getting paid. Our principal payments go up, our interest goes down, and as values go up, we can decrease the amount of the debt. Um, they prepared a schedule that did show that the debt schedule over 11-year payment period would continue to decline. So we would actually have decreasing debt uh, levies continuing all the way through the repayment of these bonds. Um, they estimated two, $2,125,000 that covers uh, cost of bond issuance as well, and then we also have, uh, we're gonna try and do as many ADA ramps 
uh, utilizing the money and continuing to utilize CDBG money as well uh, through the process in the remaining 60% of the city. But th this would be done through two bond issues, one for $1.275 million in 2018 and then another series in 2021 for 850000 and uh, that would get us through. The average bond issue was about 0.61 mils, and I said that might actually drop uh, based on the amount of, of uh, increases in values. Uh, that was the estimate they had given originally was the average over the 11-year repayments would be about 0.61 mil. Um, our average value in Clawson's a little higher than 54 right now, so just from a, an average standpoint, it would be about $32.94 a year. Um, and the good thing about it being uh, on the tax roll as a bond is that it's deductible for federal income taxes. Um, we would f begin in 2018 in the spring and complete the program in 2022. Um, and as I mentioned, it would allow us to do this without increasing our debt millage. Um, I mentioned here the 0.3 mil and 0.33 mil is the first two years of levy of debt levy, which would start in 2018. Um, and then I adjusted this from that information that I got yesterday. Uh, we reduced from 7.8 last year to 7.65 this year, and the estimate for 2018 would drop to about 7.62 and then 7.61 the following year. And then as we get further into this, some of our debt, our library bond in 2021 comes off and then our North Arm drain debt comes off also in 2021. So that drops it uh, almost a half mil when those two amounts come off. And then when we get to the end of this uh, bond repayment, we'll be all the way down to 4.13 mils because of uh, additional uh, coon drain debt. And I think it's 2028 before we start um, seeing some uh, drops in the road and infrastructure bonds. So, um, again, the good news is the debt millage is going to continue to drop, uh, uh, even though we continue to do infrastructure work. Um, I asked why would someone support this. Uh, f I think everyone has agreed. I've gotten a lot of phone calls, very positive phone calls, even from those who have already had their sidewalks done, uh, saying the program's great because it's going to fix the sidewalks all throughout the community. Um, a lot of people bike, walk. Um, and they say it's great going in the areas especially that have already been done because you've got really good sidewalks. Uh, five, the five years was the best feasible um, logistically and financially to complete the program. Uh, so this will get us done in five years. Um, by doing the sidewalk program through a bond sale, the remaining costs would also be shared by commercial taxpayers as well as the residents. That's another advantage. It helps share the cost a little bit more and not just the residential um, community. And it gets a 60% 60, 60 of the city left to be done gets done in five years as opposed to 17. And, um, and then after we get through this program, we can certainly decide uh, what we want to do going forward. You know, we, you could always go for another bond issue and go back. I mean, the best news is it doesn't, uh, certainly doesn't take as much money as you go back through. Um, I was just judging based on where, where I live, Italia did the program in 2001, and those sidewalks that were done 16 years ago still look great. I mean, they're in great shape. So, um, you know, we're probably getting 30 years easily out of sidewalks anymore, uh, and especially the fact that we're taking some of the roots out that are uh, being heaved up by trees, um, which causes a lot of the issue with sidewalks. But some of the old aggregate sidewalks as well that were put in in the 50s and 60s are still in, in good shape. So um, we can certainly revisit this when this program is done. Um, and the next steps, if council were to agree to move in this direction, uh, we would have our bond attorney and our bond advisor work on language to put on the ballot in November. And the program would, if, uh, if the millage is approved, if the bond is approved, the program would restart again in spring of 2018 uh, in section one, and then we would get through it in five years. And then as I mentioned, because we continue to pay uh, some of our existing debt and some of it retires, we'll continue to see an increase or decrease in debt levies, which will actually save taxpayers. Um, sorry, I went. 
lost my place there. Technical difficulties. There you go. Um, and then completing it through a bond sale continues to be a less expensive than the previous program where we were built by slab that needed to be replaced. And anyone who has a, a bigger lot or a corner lot knows that it can be very expensive. It was expensive proposition into the thousands. Uh, so the sharing of the cost certainly makes a lot of sense. And when this was first established, the council did this to try and take that potential big ticket cost and spread the cost over the community in a, a much smaller scale. Uh, the $25 was, was great, and I think when we started it, we believed we'd be done within 15 years, and uh, the costs just don't go very far anymore. So this is certainly an option that um, it gets this completed and still, I think, at a, a better cost than what we were doing. Um, and as I said, if council is, is interested, I will ask our bond attorney to come up with language <coughs> Uh, to put on the November ballot, and that would come back to council um, in, in the form of a resolution for ballot language. So what you're saying is at presently residents pay $25 a year sidewalk tax. With this millage, the average home would pay about $33 per year. The benefit would be... Uh, we'd be able to complete the sidewalks in the city in five years versus the 17 years. Correct. And we did, I think the last presentation I did on the sidewalks, we looked at the adjustment to the fees and uh, the concern there was that, you know, if, if there's a test for whether something's a fee or a tax, and I think the concern was there's no doubt if you sell bonds, and I think they looked at the cost as well, likely being lower, uh, it's before the voters, so the voters can decide whether or not this is something they approve of. So uh, John was pretty adamant that if we did move forward, rather than increasing the fee uh, and levying that way, that we, we uh, recommend a bond sale, which, again, another advantage is the commercial property taxpayers would also pay toward the sidewalks. One of the alternatives we spoke about was in 2020 when the George Kuhn debt falls off that we'd be able to go out for a millage an infrastructure millage at that time so there wouldn't be an increase or decrease to residents it would continue to be the same amount of money yeah, and that could. infrastructure bond would include the sidewalks and other streets yeah we could certainly add uh, sidewalks that we've even already done as part of that millage mm -hmm. um and uh, one of the other uh, considerations, too, is that, and we'll find, we should find out, I still haven't gotten the report back from MERS on our annual um, defined benefit pension. Uh, that's another option going forward that, that could really put the city in a much better position is if we're able to issue bonds for our pension obligation. Um, and because the accelerated payments planned over the next seven years uh, would put us in a position where we'd be short in our general fund and water and sewer fund and, you know that's that's something that puts us in a tough spot so i'm really hoping that when that information comes that the state uh, would allow us to uh, sell bonds but there's always an opportunity as well to present it to the residents and let them look it might free up enough additional money because we lock in our payment that we could do additional infrastructure mm -hmm. just by using our regular millage so there are going to be some options. That's that's something big uh, on our plates here for in, within the next six months to find out if the state would uh, would allow us to sell bonds through the state of Michigan for our pension obligation funding. And we've been closed to new hires. Um, we're we're fixed now, and we've eliminated our legacy costs. But the issue now is they want to accelerate your payments to get you to 100 percent funded. And we'd like to get there, but we need longer time to do that. And it's a possibility that the bonds would help us do that. In the sidewalk plan, does that include um, at the intersections making the sidewalks ADA? Yeah, we did. We did put some extra money in there to do ADA ramps. They're pretty expensive to do um, because of the requirements, um, but we did put money in there to be able to do the. Uh, the ones that need to be done. There's some that are done now uh, that 
probably meet the requirements, but we're going to try and do as many as possible with those uh, truncated domes and then continue to use CDBG money wherever we can um, to assist. Um, it's, it's a little bit of money. It's 20-some thousand if we can do it each year, but every little bit helps. And do you know why our, uh, the ramps with the domes in class and uh, we move along to the block and you come to the intersection and then it turns in before you go to the ramp. Royal Oak has the same truncated domes mm -hmm. on their sidewalk, but it goes straight across from intersection to intersection. Well, Why is Clawson different? I think when they did Main, Main Street's where I'm thinking where there's quite a few of those, they did that really for the safety of bikers and walkers rather than just darting across. Mm -hmm. If you're on a bike, you actually have to turn now, and it makes you kind of recognize a little bit more whether traffic's coming or not. You can't just zip across maybe in front of a car, and I think that's part of the consideration was for safety. So, because you do see that a light, it, if you have a straight shot across an intersection uh, on a bike, you're generally not going to be as careful looking. Where now, if you have to turn and then go across, you're going to be turning back toward traffic coming towards you. And that was really the idea of that was to make them the intersection safer. So that was Clausen's interpretation. Yes, yes, that was uh, when AEW reviewed the, especially the Main Street intersections. They said this is a recommended safety issue because it does force you to turn back towards traffic before you get out into the street rather than zipping across and that's really why they did it and it does also provide a moment of greater visibility to vehicle drivers automobile drivers i do find myself you know at phillips a lot when i come from home is it, you do you do notice somebody somebody coming straight and you notice them and you know again it causes me to stop farther back um, as far as a vehicle goes, and then generally either wave them across or they'll wave you across, but it does create more visibility. Thank you. Uh, Question. You think this, uh, you'll be able to put this PowerPoint or at least some bullet points, 20 yeah. different bullet points on the web page or yeah. Facebook page I'll so have people a, can... I'll have a PDF version that I'll give to Mike to put on the web uh, site, and then uh, I'll see if Dave can get it on as well. So, so basically for... Eight dollars more a year per resident. Mm -hmm. We're going to shorten the finish time from 17 years to five years. Right. And by and large, it's really not going to be any type of increase with the with the drop in with the drop in. And, yeah, and that was, I think that was the key was looking at we're going to have drops by reducing. I mean, as values go up, we were able to reduce the debt millage we have to levy because we have to pay a fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, principal and interest payment so yeah those those debt millages dropping allow us to actually keep the tax rate the same or the the uh, estimate is that it'll continue to drop and then as we pay off bonds in full the north arm and the drain um, through royal oak and the library bond both come off in 2021 so that frees up right. a little over half a mil i believe so that comes off as well so it allows us to do this without hitting the taxpayers with the tax increase. In addition to that, if, if we paid, if we were paying $25 per year for the next 17 years, uh, that's $425. And by doing it this way, the proposed way, we're only paying for 11 years. Um, that's 22% less yeah. uh, tax. And it's and again, you don't run into the, the challenge of whether the, the fee was a a fee or a tax we don't have to we don't run into that by selling the bond so there's a lot of things again i think john feels a lot more comfortable with uh going to the voters and saying this is how we're going to pay for it this is what we're going to do with it and then have them vote I, if i could i have two questions uh one bouncing back to the, the pension uh bonds um, is that something that would have to go to the voters uh, for a bond issue? If the state of Michigan uh, agrees to allow us to bond uh, through the state, then we don't. We do not have to go back to the voters. Okay. Right. Um, if the state of Michigan says no, then we could go back to the voters. And again, the sell is to show people that it's going to generate. It's going to generate an enough additional, actually, a decrease in our payment, especially if we can bond over 15 years. It would free up money that we could use for road and infrastructure um, because of the savings we would get in the payment. Yeah. The, the issue right now is the payments are going to accelerate over the next 
well, in 11 years, really, because our, our police department pension is down to 11 years of amortization. And what they do is they just take the total amount you owe as unfunded liability, and they divide it by 11, and the other groups are eight. They divide it by eight, and they come up with this is what you owe. And each year it's going up anywhere from 150 to $170,000 a year, which, as we found going through this budget process, the revenues aren't going up. I think, I think Matt, I think you noticed that our revenue is the same in the general fund as 2002. So we're really not getting any revenue increases, yet our expenses continue to go up. We're cutting where we can, but um, it, would, it would give us an opportunity to lock in that payment and, again, not have to charge the residents additional tax money. Well, and that, and that is not an expense that is um, a negotiable expense. Right. We are required to pay it. So it's not going to them to say we want to spend money and give us money. It's something we are obligated to pay. Right. And the light at the end of the <clears throat> tunnel is still there. Whether it's 11 years or 15 years through a bond issue, the light at the end of the tunnel is there because once the pension bonds would be paid, our obligation ends other than our normal cost for defined benefit pension. And then, you know, we have an issue where if we're 100% funded, the normal cost is around $86,000 a year, whereas the overall payment the, this coming year goes up to one point, almost $1.6 million. So that's going to, you know, in 15 years when the bonds are paid off, that legacy cost light at the end of the tunnel we've talked about for years is finally there. And a lot of that legacy cost, uh, retiree as well, as we go along retiree health, those payments in 30 years are going to be gone. So it's going to free up a lot of tax dollars for, you know, future council members and managers and finance directors to decide what do we want to do with all this money. And, you know, Clawson will go from, you know, on the upper end of tax to, you know, toward the bottom. <coughs> And then that money can be used for additional infrastructure, you know, anything you want. So the legacy cost elimination is huge. Thank you. My second question, uh, while I'm thinking of it, can we receive a copy of that map? I don't know that we yeah. saw that. I will send that. Thank you. And uh, maybe that could be available online as well. I will do that. Please. Mark, a comment and a question. I think a lot of people think because uh, the homes have rebounded and selling it, much higher than what they were 10 years ago that the city should be raking in funds. But it, again, as you said, uh, we're pretty much taking about the same amount we were 15 years ago. Yeah, and, and I know it's hard to grasp sometimes thinking about it. The Headley Amendment rolls back the millage each year to keep the rate to the rate of inflation, which again is great for taxpayers because you pay less. Uh, with the addition of Proposal A, our increases in property tax revenues, if the average Residential value in Clawson last year went up close to 10% again. And everybody thinks, well, especially if somebody buys a new home and they get uncapped and they're paying, they may be paying twelve or $1,300 more than the previous. Well, that's all money for Clawson and the schools, right? Well, yes, but that additional cost they pay gets spread as savings across the entire community because of the way the Headley Amendment rolls back the millage and Proposal A works. So... It would be great if we could recognize a 10% increase in our tax revenue, and then we wouldn't have to go back to the voters. But again, it, it, it's damaging to the taxpayers to have to pay a 10% increase in their taxes each year. It's a double-edged sword. It limits the amount of tax increases, but at the same time, it limits the amount of revenue that we can recognize now that our values are, are bouncing back. And you're seeing those huge gaps again <clears throat> between taxable value, if you've lived in your home for a while, and assessed value. And that gap got completely closed when we had the market crash for homes, but the gap's there again, and it is great. It's great for homeowners. It certainly gives people pause to move or to sell their home because you're getting that great proposal A taxable value, and you have to think about, well, do I want to go somewhere else and get in a new home and get uncapped and probably maybe even pay twice the amount of taxes? But but true, it's I think people think, well, you're getting a lot more money in now, when we really aren't. Our property tax increases uh, for the 17-18 budget year were, were about a ten, a nine-tenths of a percent, which is what the rate of inflation was. So it's hard to recognize the increases in value because of those inflationary barriers. So we have to look for other ways, and we're certainly trying to find other ways to keep the taxes where they're at, you know, and then 
in 20 years they're going to be significantly lower. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else under the city manager's report? Um, I did want to mention at the SACRA meeting last week, it looks like our bin delivery date has actually been moved up. Um, right now they're anticipating around our August 21st they'll start delivering and then our window, it's about a two week uh, delivery time for Clawson. So it's, look, it's looking like instead of September, it'll be late August when they start delivering and you'll get notification and uh, the company doing it is very well organized and, um, and again, if, if someone insists they don't want one, they don't have to take one. But they're going to try and get everyone to take it and at least try it. And then uh, they'll work with uh, duplexes and multifamily dwellings. They'll work on those if they want to bin. They'll be able to distribute them. Um, some places already have good recycling collection that they're not going to change. They'll just leave it how it is. But every residential home will be offered a bin. And uh, they're hoping that everyone will at least take it and try it and, uh, and wheel it out there for their recycling but put every, putting everything in I go through this every week in fact when I go home tonight I'll, I'll sort through breaking down boxes and try and fit everything in my bin uh, and then if I don't I save it for next week but and I know there's people with multiple bins but it sure will be nice to put everything in that mm -hmm. 65 gallon can and roll it out there each week that's all I have thank you I do, I do want to remind everyone that our next council meeting is going to be on a Wednesday, July 5th, due to the 4th of July holiday. And on July 11th, council will meet at 6.30. Um, we're going to have board appointment interviews again on July 11th. Any other business? On to new business. I would like to thank everyone who participated in CraftCom this last Friday and Saturday. It was a marvelous event. The weather held. The bands were great. The food was good. The free kid zone and activities was marvelous. Seeing everyone in costume um, was awesome. And I heard many, I heard all the positive comments, and we're all looking forward to CraftCom in 2018. I do want to remind everybody that the DIA Inside Out program remains in Clawson through the middle of July. There are 10 locations in Clawson, and the maps for the installation where the art, art pieces are, you can find in city buildings. So July 15th, about the art will be taken down and moving on to another city. Our farmer's market is alive and well at Clawson City Park on Sundays from 9 to 1. Each week we have different themes. In, in honor of our 4th of July celebration on July 2nd, the DIA Away program, which is their traveling museum and activity center, will be at the market along with uh, obstacle and bounce house inflatables sponsored by Klaus and Youth Assistance. And the market's open every week through September 24th. A new event that the National Guard is inviting people to are Friday sports and team building workouts with Sergeant Galagos every Friday, 2 to 4 p.m., starting June 23rd at Warden Field 5 in Royal Oak, which is behind the high school. So activities would be flag football, soccer, dodgeball, softball, warm-ups and stretching, each week a different sport. If you're interested, um, you would call the number on the flyer. The flyers can be found in city buildings again also. Recommended ages are 16 to 30, but anybody can participate. The Youth Assistance Family Recreation Trip is coming up Friday, June 30th. Tickets are now on sale at Hunter Community Center for $3 a person with a six-ticket limit. Uh, 
We meet at Red Oaks Water Park, and we enter as a group at 11 a.m. You're welcome to spend the day there, but we need to enter as a group to maintain that $3 uh, admission piece as youth assistance subsidizes the rest of the ticket. So if you buy a ticket and you're late, arriving after 11, you're going to be obligated to pay the full water park fee. But it's our annual trip. It's well attended. We've been doing it for many years, and the day's always been warm. Um, July 8th is our movie night in Clausen, Cinema in the Street. It's sponsored by the DDA. Um, we talked about this earlier with our agenda item. Um, the night, is, the movie is Night at the Museum. Festivities start at 6 p.m. with activities for kids of all ages, and the movie begins at dusk. And what we've all been waiting for are Fourth of July activities that I'll defer to Councilman Willie to to define this year. Well, it's that time of year, and um, we're really excited to celebrate um, the 4th of July here in Clawson, a long-standing tradition. Um, and the events start this Saturday. On June 24th is the Kitty Parade at 11 a.m., um, and there's going to be a food truck rally over at the park as well. Um, the fun run on Sunday, the evening run at 7, that's the free fun run, and the 5K is at 7.30, and those both start at the park. On Wednesday at 7 is the Ice Cream Social on June 28th, sponsored by the Clawson Lions Club. And at 7.30, the band concert, sponsored by the Clawson Parks and Recreation, and um, the performance is the South, South Oakland County um, Concert Band. Uh, July 3rd is bonus night over at the park. Um, bonus night for the concession area as well as the craft show will start. Um, it's from 3 to 9 um, with a $2 entry fee to the park side, but the um, arts and crafts remain free of charge. Um, looks like there's going to be a co-ed all-star youth softball game this year, 4, 6, and 8 p.m. On, the, on Monday the 3rd. And then Tuesday... Start um, over at the Clawson United Methodist Church for their annual Herb, Herb Glen Memorial Pancake Breakfast, and that's from 7 to 10.30, and that's sponsored by the Clawson Rotary Club. Um, at 7.45 to 8.45 is the Firecracker Mile, and that starts at 14 and Crooks. Um, opening ceremony at the Blair Library at 8.30 a.m. Um, let's see what else. The, let's see. The Firecracker Mile actually starts at 9.00. And the parade starts at 9. Now, there's no rain date. It will happen. And then the arts and crafts fairs from 10 to 6, as well as the midway with games and great food. Uh, the annual water battle is at 1. And the fireworks are at dusk. And they go off rain or shine. Once they put them down, they have to go up. Um, if you'd like to volunteer and help us out, that would be great. Um, I'm actually looking for people to carry some of the helium balloons this year, and it will be a joyful occasion because it looks like we can get helium. So if you'd like to help me out, um, just email me at Debbie at ClawsonParade.com. It's D-E-B-B-I-E at ClawsonParade.com. Or if you'd like to be a parade marshal, work at the gates, um, there's all sorts of volunteer opportunities for, you, for those that would like to help out. So look forward to seeing you for the celebration. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. I know. it's, And <clears throat> we also have our traditional fire truck rides in the 1947 Mack truck. So the fire uh, department begins rides about a week before July 4th, circling, circling each block. Um, they do have a Facebook page that will tell you what area that they will be in upcoming, and that's always a popular class and tradition. Can't wait. I know. Rides for all ages. Anything else? All right, the floor is open for public discussion. Hello. Cinema in the Street. 
10 years. This is the 10th annual. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years since we showed E.T. the first time. So Night at the Museum, this year's movie. I think it's going to be a really good one. Um, the street closes at 4.30 to set up the 50-foot movie screen. So people can bring their chairs down or whatever it is they're going to sit on and get their spot on the street. On the um, southern end will be the games and entertainment for the kids, which typically starts at 6. This year is going to be 6.30 till 9. So 9 o'clock, time to start closing that stuff down. Everybody go find their seats because um, as it gets dark, it'll be time to start showing the movie. So we, like Debbie, on the 4th of July are hoping for fantastic weather all that week, which it will be. So we hope to see a really good crowd. This has become a really signature event for Clawson, and um, it's a lot of fun. It's one of the most fun things that we do as the DDA. So hope to see you all there, and uh, good night. Thank you. Anyone else for public discussion? All right, public discussion is closed. Madam Mayor, I make a motion to adjourn. Support. Roll call, please. Mayor Loops. Yes. <clears throat> Councilmember Horton. Yes. Councilmember Albrook. Yes. Councilmember Woolley. Yes. All right. Happy Fourth, everybody.